Have you ever wondered how related the number of people that drown in pools each year is to how many Nicolas Cage films are released the same year? Turns out there is a 66.6% .6 correlation between the two. Or how about the fact that there's a 99.26% correlation between the divorce rate in Maine and the per capita consumption of margarine? Or a 99.79% .79 correlation between spending on science, space and technology, and the number of suicides by hanging, strangulation and suffocation? Just because there is a correlation between two variables doesn't mean that one causes the other. This assumption is a logical fallacy, and yet we're drawn to headlines like people who have more sex make the most money. Unfortunately, this does not always equal that. Even though it may look like it, cheese consumption probably isn't related to how many people die tangled in their bedsheets, but sometimes it isn't so obvious. Numerous studies found that menopausal women taking hormone replacement therapy had a lower than average incidence of heart disease, leading doctors to believe that hormone replacement could protect against heart disease. However, when women underwent randomized control trials, they found that hormone replacement therapy actually increased the risk of heart disease. When the original data was finally reanalyzed, it was found that women who took the therapy were of a higher socioeconomic group with a better diet and exercise regime. This was the real cause behind decreased risk of heart disease. Another case found that those who used nightlights as a kid were more likely to develop myopia, but there's actually a strong link between between parental myopia and the development of child myopia, so in reality, myopic parents were simply more likely to leave a light on in their child's bedroom. These are examples of a lurking variable, where A does not cause B, but rather C causes them both. It's a little like taking people who have lung cancer and thinking, hey, they're all carrying lighters in their pockets, so lighters must cause cancer, while not realizing that smoking is the confounding variable. And scientists work hard in their studies to try and avoid this. But it gets worse when popular media takes advantage of these potentially coincidental correlations. And one study about the chocolate weight loss connection was actually designed as a way to expose how science reporting can be sensationalized. A science writer with a PhD in microbiology ran a real clinical trial where participants were assigned to three groups, a low carb diet, a low carb diet plus a 1.5 ounce chocolate bar, and a group that maintained their regular diet. At the end of three weeks, the chocolate group did lose the most weight, but the journalist consciously used terrible science. He used 50 15 participants and measured 18 different measurements including weight loss, cholesterol, sleep quality, blood pressure, well-being, etc. And when you use a small group of people and measure a large number of things, you're pretty much guaranteed to get a statistically significant result, which Veritasium has an amazing video on here if you want to check out. The result could have easily been something different, such as chocolate correlates to lower blood pressure. If the study had been peer-reviewed by other researchers, it would have been called out. So instead, he submitted it to a journal for a fee of 600 euros, making up a fake institution name, the Institute of Diet and Health. He then sent out a press release to dozens of media publications, and very quickly, getting slim by chocolate was front page news. With that in mind, however, we can't dismiss correlation entirely. Correlative evidence is an essential part of science. Double blind studies are not always possible or ethical to run, often leaving correlation as the best evidence available. When every possible causative relationship is systematically explored, correlation can be used as a powerful tool for assessing cause and effect relationships and progressing science even further. Big thanks to Tyler Vegan for providing his charts on these interesting correlations. You can check out his website or his book Spurious Correlations for more peculiar examples. And subscribe for more weekly science videos every Thursday.